She's been taken care of. Hopefully her strength will regain soon. She's a rather fragile one, that lady with it. Well, she hasn't eaten all day, so it's hardly surprising. She has. She was uh, doing an awful lot uh, yesterday with the portals. So I can take uh, quite a toll yeah. on somebody. And using huh. magic full stop will take a toll on anyone. Indeed. So, Shalom, maybe you should bring to the general's attention your uh, concerns while we're here. Perhaps uh, you better do it, brother, in a more private setting. Uh, we three here are the most senior commanders of military forces in these lands. And we must all work together. Which means we can't have any grumblings or any misgivings. Especially with the general when she gives orders. Working together means we must put aside our personal feelings if we are all to survive the coming days and weeks ahead. Indeed. My good brother here, uh, General, is happy to follow your orders. He's not happy to be insulted in front of other soldiers. In what way? Hmm. Well, let's see. Your snide comments about me. Your name calling. I'm going to need honor. you to elaborate. I don't believe I've ever insulted your honor. Hmm. Well, let me see. What was it you called me this morning when you thought I was in prayer, sir? So grumps a lot, yes. Indeed. And you think that is uh, appropriate to insult a knight's honor like that? You are being rather grumpy. It was more of a teasing name rather than an insult, sir. Yeah. And therein lies the problem. Okay. Have I ever oh, well. insulted you or made any snide comments? Uh, several, actually. Oh, do elaborate. You've done nothing but insult my people since you got here. Can you be more specific? Green skin, beast man. These are common words. Not, not where insults. I come from, and they are people who are working under my command, and you will show them some respect. Green skin is a terminology used by the green skins themselves. It's not an insult. Well, he oh, considers it such. What they are. And, and have I called him Greenskin after the fact? No. I was not aware that he considered it an insult, so I did not no, know. No, brother, that was my fault. I was continuing to call him Greenskin. It's just habit. And when I learned that he found it offensive, I have never called him such since. You've done nothing but insult my people since you got here, and you're forgetting that these are not soldiers, sir. I have not insulted anybody. Not directly. Oh, you think an indirect insult is better, do you? As I have said, I was not aware that these terms were offensive. Both you not and... He is aware, my lady. He will endeavour to... Uh, and I appreciate that. Do not say so. And I, I do understand to do. that things are different where you come from, and I do understand that you've been through a very rough time getting here. Actually, yeah, that is an understatement. I lost my entire fleet getting here. Over 80 soldiers. Okay, can we lose the tone and the attitude, please? We're trying to have a conversation and sort these problems out, are we not? Yes, we are. We are all friends in this room, one way or another. <clears throat> Things are different here. Divided. But these people are not soldiers, sir. 
They volunteered to stand against chaos because they felt it was the right thing to do. They don't have your training. They don't have your background. They are farmers. They are brewers, weavers, cooks, blacksmiths who have That's taken not up arms. It's the not an excuse. Of our country are do not call them peasants, well. sir. And if you raise it your voice to me again, insult. raise your it voice to me again an and I will shout back. The peasants of our land are called peasants. That is what they refer to them as themselves. It is not an insult. I am not calling your people peasants. I am calling ours. Again, you misunderstand. I think I just asked you to not shout at me. I think we should all just calm down a little bit here. Lord Shalon is uh, correct, my lady. He is not calling uh, anyone peasants but our own, and this is what they are used to. I am not used to referring to people who work for me as peasants. I find it degrading and insulting. As I have stated, they call themselves peasants. It's been the way for centuries. They do not find it insulting nor degrading. Uh, our people know that uh, the Knights of Britonia will give their lives to make sure that they are free and safe from the enemies of our uh, land. My point Let is... The point is that we are in a different land now, brother. And whatever the will of the gods, any gods, has brought these people to our lands. The winds of magic have drawn them here and dumped them on our doorstep. It is not their fault that they have fallen into a world that is very different from their own. But they are learning to adapt just as we are. And it just takes time, I suppose. I understand that. I understand that they are not soldiers. But as I have pointed out, people from our land are expected to do the same. And they are not soldiers. They are farmers. They are brewers. They are tavern keeps. And I'm sure you give them a little more leniency than you would give your own troops. I am only asking that you do the same. I have done so, have I not? Comments like I'm not a peasant archer don't really help, do they? What? A peasant... I heard you say that! Comparing myself to a peasant archer is saying that I'm not as good. It was a compliment, not an insult. I don't see I'm how that's... I'm the peasant archer to be more skilled than I. Okay. Well, that's not where I thought that was going. I said I was not as good as a peasant archer. That's what I meant. Peasant archers from home are extremely skilled. Yes. As it is their main weapon that they practice with all the time, a bow. I do prefer a bow to a sword myself, if I'm honest. So when I said I, I'm no peasant archer, I meant that as a compliment to the archer's back. Okay, then there we have a clear misunderstanding. Maybe the fact that you've been a little standoffish since you got here led me to mistakenly, and I apologise for that, think that that was an insult. Right, anything else that I've said that might be offensive? There's been a few snide comments while we were doing the tournament, but I called your attention to them at the time. I don't keep a bulk of transgressions, so it's not my way. If I see something wrong, I will call it when I see it. That's the way I handle things. Besides, my lady, it would probably be a very long book. It's not that bad. I was only joking. See, I'm defending your honour now. Trying to the point is, I don't directly insult people or question their honour. I don't believe I've ever questioned your honour. Uh... I have made comments that things have been promised that haven't been delivered on and we need to maintain your honour, but that wasn't a challenge of your honour. That was a gentle reminder that these are the things we are supposed to do. Where from that is a uh, question of one's honour. Well, then, there we have a misunderstanding on your part, too. When a uh, Shabbat Knight says they'll do something, they do it. It might take time, but it will still be done. 
Yes, but there have been things that have been said and comments that have been made, in my opinion, to the prisoner that would take away from the honour of the dignity and respect she was promised. Which is why I call it when I see it. That's my way. I'm very direct about these things. You also have to understand, if we say, for example, Traxus, he has no honour in our eyes, he's a servant of chaos. If we was to treat him with honour, we'd be dishonouring ourselves. Yes, and we're already being far too courteous already as it is. But I don't and believe he was willingly a servant of chaos, and that's where we have a problem. Willing or not, he still is a no. cause. No, intent is, is everything. Such. Intent is everything. You could say something to me that I took as an insult, which I did, but your intent was not that, so I have accepted that that's what you're telling me. Well, the problem for me is not this. The problem for me is that that book says that he is a beast of chaos, and without that amulet, he will always be a beast of chaos. But besides... I point out that was written by the uh, person in question. How can we trust anything that he's even said in there? I'm not absolutely sure who wrote that book, to be honest with you. Well, the uh, Lady Mage seemed to think it was uh, written by himself. Well, I don't know. I don't think he would call himself a beast of chaos. I think that was written by somebody who sees anything that's not bloody human as a beast of chaos. And he has admitted as such that he has no control over his beast side. And we have several eyewitnesses saying that... Uh, Indeed, and I, at that point I can accept. But when he has the amulet, the he does. So our job is to make sure he doesn't lose that bloody amulet again. And what if the amulet is destroyed? Well, and so it's inside his bloody body, so it can't be. Or the doctor was working on a cure. The doctor was working on a cure for people who are werewolves. Let's see if he can shed some light on this. We have to explore so all avenues. supposed to be excused of all the crimes that he has committed because he was not in control. If somebody is not willingly doing something, how do you hold them accountable for it? Because he is willingly. No, he's not. If that amulet is gone, he is not willingly doing anything. He has admitted that he has no control over the beast. He's not being influenced or possessed. It's just the other side of it. And I have a dragon a side that can get out of control. Are you going to sentence me to death too? If your dragon side uh, chose to willingly follow chaos, yes. You could try. But you see my point, don't you? If my uh, steed suddenly started acting strange and following chaos, I would put it down without question. And this is where we have a difference of opinion, because I think if people can redeem themselves and be saved, they should be given the opportunity to do so. Don't give them a third chance by any means, but at least give them a second. That sort of uh, thinking, where we're from, will get you killed. Well, where I'm from, that's how we've managed to survive thousands of years. Yeah. The point is, if you keep giving people second chances and third chances, one of them will eventually betray you. I think I clearly said nobody gets a third chance. There's too many windows in this place. It's quite alright. It's just muffled voices. I'm not going to make a decision until I've heard opinions from several different people. You don't think I'm going to make a decision like this on my own, do you? No, of course not. Point is, um, the longer that he is uh, here, the more danger he represents. Not while he's wearing the amulet, sir. And there's plenty of guards in there. You keep telling me Bretonian knights and soldiers are the best, so let them do their job. I don't doubt their skill, but there are forces at work here, as you've seen yourself, that are even greater than uh, either of us care to admit. Oh, I've seen what chaos can do. I've lived it, remember? As have I. They caught you too, did they? I've never been captured, no, but I faced uh, many on the battlefield. I know what they're capable of. I've seen uh, my own knights turn against me. They go 
well, I've known my entire lives. Yes, and it's very, very stars. easy. I know. They slowly and systematically torture you until you do what they want you to do. And that's my point. That's my point as well. If they did manage to get yeah. to you, I'd try to save you too. I wouldn't uh, want saving my lady. If I got caught, I got caught. Um, I would be dishonoured. I don't see it as a dishonour. Continuing to living. And I accept we have very different views of what honour is, but that's not, to me, a dishonour. Especially if you turn it around and start fighting against them again and use the information you have to your advantage. Paces more than I do when I'm thinking, and that's saying something. It helps me uh, concentrate my thoughts. Yes, me too. So Giles was a little grumpy, I might wear a groove in his floor. I don't think so. This is a sturdy stone made by the best uh, artisans in the uh, Victorian lands. I'd say it was probably made on site here, to be honest. I can't imagine they shipped at all this all the way from Britonia. No, no, that's not what I meant. Uh, the masons here are from Britonia. They know how to shape stone to uh, near perfection. I'd say only the dwarves did better, personally. Sorry about that, I had to uh, think about something quickly. That's alright. Is there anything else concerning you, Sir Knight? You might no, as well speak freely. Right. We've already shouted at each other. You might as well speak freely and say what's on your mind. Just remember... Uh, There is more to command than just uh, blindly following orders. I'm confused. I'm commanding, uh, how am I following orders? No, I meant those under you. Don't uh, expect them not to question your orders. They should question my they orders. Will. It's how I'm held accountable. It's the manner in which the disagree. question is raised that's the problem. They might even disobey, but what I'm trying to say is that uh, sometimes it's necessary, because when one blindly follows orders, they are not a uh, good commander themselves, they're not good soldiers. It's intuition. I understand. On their feet. Although I was a little cross yesterday that you were questioning my soldiers and them not following commands when you ran off by yourself. When did I run off by myself? When we saw the person running back across the ice, you went to catch them up and disappeared. You didn't come back. We had to come looking for you. Oh, we did come back. We just lost you. All right. I just but even find so, you. we went up and down, and we couldn't find you. They so were we they were following on. their instinct the same way as you followed yours, which is what I've trusted them to do. Like I said, they're not soldiers. <laughs> I do need a word about them returning when the horn is sounded. Absolutely, I would agree with that. Egan, what do you think? We should also, they, uh, the they have no rank or command. <laughs> so they do. Miss Terra is my second orders. in command. Uh, yeah. yeah, Miss Terra, yes, but what about... Uh, who was it that kept running off by themselves? Oh, Egan. Yes, I'll have a word with him. Yes. And uh, Master Zay, too. Huh? As far as I'm aware, neither of those have rank, so they should not be... Uh, Question, or does that <sighs> yes, but we have a dragon and a wolf who go with their instincts a lot. Most of the time it stands them in good stead, but I will talk to them about returning when the horn is sounded. But point is that uh, those without rank should be following orders without question, but someone like Sir Giles has the right to uh, question your orders and if he deems it absolutely, utterly necessary to save lives, he can even disobey them. 
Oh, he has, repeatedly. Questioned, I mean. But do remember, I'm new at this too. And I'm going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. So you're bad enough to man. You can never be uh, right 100% of the time. No, I know. It's living with the consequences of that that's the problem. It's also learning from those consequences and mistakes that makes you a better commander. Anything else on your mind? You might as well say it. I can see it niggling there in the back. Actually, no, I can't really think of anything else. Hmm. Is there anything you would like to say to me? No, only that we need to learn to work together and not against each other. That goes both ways, sir. You have experience that I do not have, but at the same time, you're nearly as hot-headed as I am. Which means we're going to clash on a regular basis. And I don't want to have to slip into dragon voice to be heard, because it hurts my throat after a while. The Craxis gets a bed because Lady Zedica got a bed, and she's a prisoner too, is she not? She is. But I'm uh, not going to treat them differently just because you deem that they're different types of people. I will treat them both the same. As I pointed out to uh, Lady Zedica, she willingly turned herself in for trial. She uh, willingly repented uh, following the <clears throat> Runus powers. She gave information uh, to help bring about their downfall. So Craxus has done neither of that. He had to capture him. There was injuries. Claims to have no memory. Trust him. How can we uh, treat somebody with honor that uh, apparently seems to have none? Because that's what makes us better than chaos. But as I, as I have pointed out, it's free to an enemy without that lacks honor dishonors oneself. I disagree. Showing kindness and compassion in the face of adversity is not a dishonor to anybody. And we'll have to uh, agree to disagree on that one. Until we've seen how he is. When he wakes up, we can't say that he's not repenting of what he did. He's not really been given a chance to speak for himself yet. Myself and Sir Giles spoke to him at, uh, for a good hour, I would say, uh, last night. When he was frightened sure and on the floor, no doubt. I don't know if he was frightened, but yes. Well, he wasn't threatened in any manner, General. I, I don't question that, but he has been captured and thrown in a cell and he doesn't know what's going on. That's frightening for anybody. Once he's feeling a little more himself and he's woken up, maybe he will have information that he can share if he can remember things. It may take time for his memory to come back, I don't know. But until we talk to him, we're not going to know, are we? What I can gather, he has no memory at all. Since uh, Zedeka took that uh, amulet off him. How do you hold one accountable for something they don't know they've even done? This is where I'm struggling. I'm not they saying said... forgive him, pat him on the head and send him home, but there has to be something that we can do to help him. If it was... Uh item or a possession of some kind then perhaps but 
we're talking about a, another side of him. But the item being removed is what brings that out. I, I understand that, but that there is the problem. If something was to happen said to said item, if the enemy was to realize that that is all that's keeping him in the uh, state that he currently is, this is my problem. I do see it. But we need to either then think... find a way to make sure the amulet can never be removed or cure him. Those two things should be ruled out before we make any f permanent decisions, should they not? And what if uh, sure. one of the options is death, my lady? Well, that's a bridge we'll have to cross when we get to it. But let's make sure that that is our last option first. The problem is also, like, we don't know how much of the information the enemy has. They was aware of our movements yesterday, which means that some, some, somebody or something has eyes and ears on this fortress to know that what we was planning. It's partly which is... our fault because we discussed it in an open courtyard. It should have been done. Escort. Which is why I've suggested we make another building somewhere that's completely sealed and sounds can't be heard from the outside. So Giles mentioned something. We do need to make sure that we're not overheard. We need to rule out that possibility. 